we will continue our discussion on the velocity analysis problem. We have been looking at the geometric uh, problem in velocity analysis. We have looked at certain concepts of uh, some of certain geometric concepts like instantaneous center rotation and relative instantaneous center rotation. And based on that, we have discussed an important theorem, which is known as the Aronhold Kennedy theorem. So, we are going to start by just reviewing the Aronhold Kennedy theorem, which states that if three bodies are in relative motion with respect to one another, the three relative instantaneous centers of velocity are collinear. So, just to explain this once again, let me consider three bodies. So, two and the third one I will define like this that suppose this is the instantaneous center of rotation of let me call it body 2. So, this point is the relative instantaneous center of body 2 with the ground which I call body 1. And let me assume that this is the relative instantaneous center of body 3 with respect to the ground. In other words, these two points are hinged to the ground. These two points are hinged to the ground at this instant of time. I can consider that these two points are hinged to the ground at this point of time. So, as per our nomenclature, we can say that this is I 1 2, this is I 1 3. So, relative instantaneous centers of rotation of body 2 with respect to the ground is I 1 2. Relative instantaneous center of rotation of body 3 with respect to the ground is I 1 3. Let me consider this line joining I 1 2 and 1 3. Now, I ask the question what is the relative instantaneous center of rotation of body 2 and 3. Let me also make one more consideration that this is omega 2 this is omega 3. I have taken arbitrarily. Now, I ask this question where lies the relative instantaneous center of rotation of body 2 relative to body 3. Now, as we have seen before this point may lie outside the domain of the physical domain of the body this relative instantaneous center of rotation I 2 3 may lie outside the physical domain of the bodies. Let us consider a test point, we will begin with a test point. So, if I consider a test point let us say G, then I know that velocity of G 2, because this, this point remember this point I can always bring into the extensions of body 2 and body 3. So, G 2 and G 3 are corresponding the points on body 2 and body 3. So, velocity of point G 2 if I mark it with red, this must be perpendicular to this line joining I 1 2 and G. Similarly, the velocity of point G 3 must be perpendicular to this line. So, this is V G 3 and this is V G 2. Now, they do not match. So, definitely G cannot be the relative I C between uh, of 2 and 3. 
then we had seen that in order to have a point a, a feasible point which can be the relative ic it must be a point on the line joining i12 and i13 consider this is our test point now so here we have again g2 and g3 they are coincident points on the extensions of bodies 2 and 3. Now, once again if I mark by red the velocity of point g 2 it must be perpendicular to this black line. So, v g 2 and velocity of g 3 must also be perpendicular to this black line. Now, their uh, directions match, but their magnitudes do not. Now, how to determine then the exact point? What we do is since the red vector is belongs to body 2, so from the center of instantaneous center of body 2, I draw this black dashed line and instantaneous center of body 3. I draw this black line wherever they intersect you can very easily realize you must have velocities as same. These two velocities must be equal. So, here I have V g 2 equal to V g 3. So, this must be the relative i c i 2 3. So, this is i 2 3. Here is i 1 3 and here is i 1 2. And you can see that I 1 2, I 2 3 and I 1 3 lie on a single straight line. Now, here I have fixed the ground, but you can also make the ground move. The situation will not change. The situation will not change even if I let the ground move. Because remember I 1 2 is the relative instantaneous center of body 2 with respect to the ground that will remain the same. I 1 3 is the relative instantaneous center of body 3 with respect to the ground that also will remain same even if I let the ground move, but keeping the relative motions the same. So, nothing is going to change. So, therefore, we have this theorem known as the Aronhold Kennedy theorem which states that if three bodies are in relative motion with respect to one another the three relative instantaneous centers of velocity are collinear. Now, we are going to look at the implications of this theorem Bef um, after looking at some examples which you have seen before. So, this is the relative I c between bodies 2 and 3 the revolute pair for the R pair the revolute pair itself is the relative I c between 2 3. In the case of a prismatic pair the relative I c between the bodies 2 and 3 lie on this line which is perpendicular to the direction of sliding. So, this is the sliding direction. And the relative I c lies on this line perpendicular to the sliding direction. So, I 2 3 lies on this red dashed line somewhere at infinity. So, it lies at infinity on this red dashed line. In the case of a purely rolling disc as you know is the velocity of at the point of contact is 0 for pure rolling case therefore, this is the relative I c between the ground and the wheel. 
In the case of rolling with sliding, we cannot exactly locate, but it must lie on this line. Why? Because when it is purely rolling, it must be at the point of contact. When it is purely sliding, when it is only translating and sliding, it must be at infinity either in the upward or downward direction. So, in between if it is rolling and sliding, it will lie on this line somewhere. Now, let us apply these concepts in mechanisms. So, we will try to locate the relative ICs for this mechanism. Let me number the links first. So, ground is 1, this is 2, 3 and 4. Now, to locate all the relative ICs, we have what is known as the circle diagram. So, I will mark the number of links. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we have 4 links. So, I will mark 4 points on this circle. I will join the two, 2 points if I exactly know the relative IC between those 2 bodies. So, on the circle as you realize I have marked out exactly the number of links I have and the relative IC is between 2 links if it is known, if the relative IC between 2 links is known then I will mark that on that circle diagram, I will join. So, for example, I 1 2 is this point, the relative instantaneous center of rotation between 1 and 2 is this ground hinge. So, I know that. So, I will join 1 with 2. I also know the relative instantaneous center of rotation, so this is I 1 2, this is I 2 3. I also know that. So, I know I 2 3. This is I 3 4, the relative instantaneous centers center of uh, rotation of lengths 3 and 4. So, I know I 3 4. So, I will join 3 4 and I also know the relative I C of 4, link 4 with respect to link 1. So, I will join 1 and 4. Now, what I do not know that the circle diagram immediately tells me. For example, I do not know what is the relative I C between 1 and 3. This has not come out as yet, but can we find it? So, the answer is yes. We need to find out two independent paths starting from 1 or between 1 and 3 between 1 and 3 we need 2 independent paths. Why we need it we will get cleared very soon. So, one path is I 1 2 and I 2 3. So, I 1 2 and I 2 3. So, I 1 3 must lie on this line as per the Aronhold Kennedy theorem I 1 3 must lie somewhere on this line because I 1 2, I 2 3 and I 1 3 these are the 3 relative ICs of 3 bodies 1 2 3. So, 3 bodies 1 2 3 are in relative motion. So, therefore, their relative ICs must lie on a line. Now, of the 3 relative ICs, I exactly know 2, 2 of them I 1 2 and I 1 I 2 3. These are known I 1 2 and I 2 3 are known. So, I 1 3 must lie on this line. So, this is the black line dashed line. Similarly, 1 4 and 3, 1 is the ground 4 and 3. These are 3 bodies again which are in relative motion. So, their relative I C is must lie on a line of which I 1 4 is known and I 
3 4 is known i 1 4 is here on the ground hinge and i 3 4 is here. So, i 1 3 must also lie on that line. Now, when a point has to lie on both these lines is the intersection point this which must be i 1 3. So, I have located now i 1 3. So, I will join it by a solid line. Next is I 2 4, which is as yet unknown, but then I have two independent paths I 1 4 and I 1 2. So, I 2 4 must lie on that line. Why? Because 2, 1 and 4, the links 2, 1 and 4, they are 3 bodies in relative motion. <coughs> so, the 3 relative ICs must lie on that line of which I 1, 4 and I 1, 2 are known to me. So, therefore, I 2, 4 must lie on this red dash line. Similarly, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4 are 3 rigid bodies are in relative motion. So, therefore, the 3 relative ICs must lie on that line of which I 2, 3 and I 4, 3. I 2, 3 and I 4, 3 are known to me. So, therefore, I 2, 4 must also lie on this line. So, the intersection point gives me I 2, 4. So, I have found this as well and that completes all the relative ICs. So, I have found I 1 3 and I have found I 2 4 which were unknown using the Kennedy Aronhold theorem and this circle diagram. Circle diagram helps you to keep track of the bodies of the links and finding out searching for paths which connect two points or two links. So, let us proceed further. So, here we have a 3 r 1 p chain ground is 1, 2, 3 and the slider is 4. So, again 4 bodies. Now, what do we know? We know I 1 2, we know I 2 3, we know I 3 4, now I 1 4, this is a prismatic pair, prismatic pair between links 1 and 4. So, I 1 4 must lie at infinity along this direction which is perpendicular to the direction of sliding. So, this direction is perpendicular to the direction of sliding. So, I 1 4 must lie at infinity. So, I know this it is at infinity. Now, let me ask the question whether I can find I let us say 1 3. So, I have two paths I 1 2, I 1 2 is known and I 2 3 is known. So, therefore, I 1 3 must lie on this line. I 1 3 must lie on this line. The other path I 3 4 is known and I 1 4 is at infinity somewhere. So, therefore, I 1 3 must also lie on this line. The intersection is this. So, this must be I 1 3. 
So, now I also know I 1 3. Next I ask the question whether I can find out I 2 4. So, I 2 4 must lie on the line of I 1 4 and I 1 2. I 1 4 is at infinity and I 1 2 is this this ground hinge and I 1 4 is at infinity. So, through this point through this ground hinge I must draw a line to infinity. So, this line meets this this dashed line this line at infinity. So, these two lines are parallel. So, what I have drawn is a line through I 1 2 to meet I 1 4. Now, I 1 4 is at infinity and as I have said I 1 4 lies on this I 1 4 lies on this line, I 1 4 lies at infinity on this line. Therefore, I must draw a line parallel to that line through I 1 2 to meet at infinity, to meet I 1 4 at infinity. So, that is one. <coughs> the other is other path is I 2 3 which is here I 2 3 and I 3 4 which is here. So, which means it is this line. So, I 2 4 must lie on this line as well. So, this point as you can see this point is I 2 4. So, this intersection point is I 2 4. So, now I also know I 2 4. So, I have located all instantaneous centers of rotation. Let us move to the next mechanism. So, let me number 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, there are 4 links. So, 4 points on our circle diagram. I know the I C between 1 and 2. So, I 1 2 is known, I 2 3 is also known, I 1 4 is also known. Now, I 3 4 must lie on this line which is perpendicular to the sliding direction I 1 4 uh, I 3 4 sorry I 3 4 must lie on this line at infinity because this is a prismatic pair. So, this also I know is it at it, it, it is at infinity I 3 4 is at infinity on this blue dashed line. Now, I ask this question whether I can find out I 1 3. So, I 1 3 lies on the line of I 1 2 this is I 1 2 and I 2 3. So, which means this line I 1 3 lies on this red dash line. 
and I 1 3 also lies on this I 1 4 which is here and I 4 3 which is at infinity on this line. So, this point this intersection point must be I 1 3. So, I know I 1 3. Next I ask the question whether I can locate I 2 4. So, I 2 4 we must lie on I 1 2 and I 1 4 I 1 2 and I I 1 4 and I 1 2. So, on this line So, I 1 2 and I 1 4. So, I 2 4 must lie on this black dash line and I 2 4 must also lie on I 2 3 and I 3 4. I 2 3 I 2 3 is this and I 3 4 is at infinity along this blue dashed line remember. So, therefore, I must draw a line through I 2 3 which is parallel to this blue dashed line. So, as to meet I 3 4 at infinity. So, this black dashed line and this blue dashed line they are parallel. So, where do these two lines meet? They meet here. So, this must be I 2 4. So, we have now located both I 2 4 and I 1 3. So, all the relative ICs are now known. Let us look at this mechanism. Now, this has got 6 links 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 6 links. Now, we are going to again see what we know. So, I 1 2 is known, I 2 3 is known here, I 3 4 is known, I 4 1 is known. I 4 5 is known and I 5 6 is also known. I also know I 3 6. Suppose I want to know I 1 6. So, I am asking this question whether I can find out I 1 6. Now, you will find that there is there, there are no two paths between two independent paths between 1 and 6. So, I must have a path I define a path as one in which there are three rigid bodies because th then only I can apply Arnold Kennedy theorem. So, a path with three rigid bodies and I have none, but then if you see if I can find out I 1 3 then I have one path involving three rigid bodies one will be 1 3 and 3 6. So, let us try to find out 1 3 I 1 3. Now, for I 1 3 I have two independent paths involving two rigid bodies or three rigid bodies. So, one, one is 1 2 I 1 2 and I 2 3 1 2 and 2 3. So, this must be one line and the other path is 
1 4 and 4 3 i 1 4 and 4 3. So, this is the other path. So, this point intersection of this is i 1 3. So, I have now located i 1 3. Let me now ask the question whether I can locate i 6 4. In that case, I will have two independent paths in the involving three bodies each on these paths between 1 and 6. Okay, so, I have this question of i 4 6. Now, i 4 6 must lie on i 3 6. So, 3 6 is here and 3 4, 3 4 is here. So, on this line must lie i 6 4. Similarly, i 6 4 must also lie on i 5 6 which is this and i 5 4, i 5 4 is this. So, therefore, so this intersection point is i 4 6. So, i have located i 4 6. Now, I can ask the question whether I can find out i 1 6. Now, I have two independent paths involving three rigid bodies. So, i 4 6 and i 4 1 or 1 4, i 4 6 and i 1 4. So, let me use this. So, here I have this as my path. I passing through i 4 6 which is this and i 1 4 which is this. So, this line. So, i 1 6 must lie on this line and i 1 6 must also lie on 1 i 1 3 and i 3 6 i 1 3 i this is i 1 3 and i 3 6 i 3 6 is this. So, therefore, it must also lie on this line. Now, i 1 6 therefore, must lie on the intersection of these two black dashed line. Now, these two lines are actually parallel. So, therefore, they meet at infinity. What it means is that body 6 is in pure translation because the instantaneous center of rotation i 1 6 that means 6 with respect to ground is at infinity. So, this body 6 is in translation. body 6 is in translation with respect to the ground and this is mechanism is indeed a parallel transfer device where body 6 is parallelly transferred. So, it is in pure translation. Let us look at this case of again a six link mechanism. So, 3, 4. So, this, so this, is, this is a five link mechanism. So, 1 is ground 2, 3, 4 and 5. On the right also I have Uh, another five link mechanism which has which is only different because of the dimensions. Now, let us look at the relative I C's. So, I know I one two, I know I two three. I know I 3 4, I know also 3 5, I know 4 1 and I know 5 1. So, 
suppose I want to find out what is I 1 3. Now, there are two sets of independent path as you can see I 1 3 must lie on I 1 2 and I 2 3, I 1 2 and I 2 3 which is this line and this must also lie on I 1 4 and 4 3, 1 4 is this and 4 3 is this. So, it must lie on this. So, this is the intersection, but then it also must lie on 1 5 and 5 3, I 1 5 and I 5 3. So, it meets somewhere. So, it also meets this. Now, these these are two independent paths as well I 1 4 4 3 and I 1 5 and 5 3. So, this also is a possible possibility for I 1 3, this is also I 1 3 and there will be another I 1 3 that I will obtain using I 2 3 and I 1 2. Now, a, a single body 3 cannot have 3 relative instantaneous centers of rotation, then it cannot move and if you remember the degree of freedom what we had calculated for this mechanism was 0. So, this is not a mechanism it is actually a structure, because there are 3 possibilities for relative instantaneous centers of rotation of body 3 with respect to 1, but then the mechanism on the right is actually a mechanism it has got 1 degree of freedom. On the right the kinematic chain on the right has 1 degree of freedom because of very special dimensions and if you again calculate or find out the relative I c is I 1 3 they must lie on this 3 lines as we had done here and all these lines meet at infinity. All these 3 lines meet at infinity, so 3 is in translation with respect to the ground. So, in the case of the mechanism on the right you have motion, because the relative I c of 3 whatever way you calculate comes at infinity. So, therefore, this can move. Here is the final example. Here I have a a chain with three links. Now I so this is two, this is three, ground is one. I know I 1 2, I know I 1 3 and in both cases I also know I 2 3. So, this is in pure rolling. So, this is the I C of two relative to three. So, this is in the case here it is I 1 2 this is I 1 3 and this is I 2 3, but then you know this mechanism in which you have two friction disks they can continuously roll, they, this has 1 degree of freedom whereas, the chain on the right is a structure with 0 degrees of freedom. The reason is very simple the I C 2 3 on the on this gear always remains at this point when these two move. Whereas, when these two links if you try to move this I 2 3 is going to shift out of this line and once it shifts out of this line Arnold Kennedy theorem does not hold, but it must hold therefore, this cannot move any further. Whereas, here it the Arnold Kennedy theorem is always satisfied the Aronhold Kennedy theorem is always satisfied in the case of this two friction disks rolling, because I 2 3 always lies on this line 
whereas for the kinematic chain on the right this has a tendency to move out and that breaks the Arnold Kennedy theorem which must be satisfied it is a theorem it must be satisfied if it is not satisfied then the thing cannot move. So, that makes the kinematic chain on the right as a structure. So, I will leave you with a summary of what we have discussed today.